You know, these appear just like two normal spark plugs, except one of them is not normal. In fact, one of them is modified. So from far away, one spark plug looks like this, while the other one actually looks like this. What is going on there? This spark plug has underwent a old school method modification rather called side gapping this isn't what west virginia people do with their cousins this is an old school method of making more power you know since my last test with spark plugs you know trying to get away with a bigger cap because i'm running these high output coils i guess didn't really end the way i thought so i'm like hmm maybe i should try something a little different so that's when I thought about side gapping the spark plug. Now, truth be told, I've actually done this before. The first time I ever tried this was on my white fox body. The sound you heard of that small cam 302 was idling with side gap spark plugs. So I have, uh, you know, I have done it in the past and I actually did notice a difference on that vehicle. It wasn't extraordinary, but it was noticeable. But I never thought to do it on a turbocharged car since my last test proved that this particular engine and well, any boosted engine is very particular about how big of a gap you run. And well, when you knock off half of the, uh, you know, ground strap, you think, well, then you reduce your surface area for the spark to arc to. And this can create basically a huge, huge problem with spark blowout. But doing some research, people do this on boosted cars and really it's still a preferred method in a lot of racing applications because of the benefits to doing so. so that's when I thought, maybe I need to give it a shot. So I have all of these side gaps and I've already done the runs with these plugs before I modified them. And I did that because these are the two-step colder cell plugs and um, I've had some interesting results in the past with these making the car faster. So I wanted to get a baseline run with them first because there could be a difference plus or minus in how the car performs with them. I also choose these because they're a lot easier to side gap being copper core plugs. They're not like crazy iridium or platinum or whatever. So it makes it easier to get away with doing this. And it's $20 worth of spark plugs, not 60. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at the baseline run I did before I gapped them. And to my surprise, Buster yet again has a personal best of 40 to 80. Now, unfortunately, I don't understand why the Draggy is having such a problem with this section of road that I've been doing these recent tests on. It's not the same part of the road that I've been doing my 40 to 80 test, but the last few that I have done, including the last spark plug test video, was done all on the same section of road. So I don't understand why there is so much discrepancy between the runs in terms of the slope, but it is the same part of the road. Because of the slope being too negative, it shows as an invalid run, which I'm not even gonna to listen to that because it's definitely not right. Even the DA in temperature was very similar to the last personal best I got of uh, 4.08 seconds. And this was a four second flat 40 to 80 with a total distance covered of 362.61 feet. So yeah, Buster was covering some distance. These spark plugs just out of the box seem to do a little bit better than the ruthenium's. That's why I did what I did. Now, now I wonder how these will do after they've been modified. So with that out of the way, I'm gonna go ahead, pop them in the car. I'm gonna make sure the car is all nice and cool like I have been doing between all of my runs to keep everything as consistent as possible. And then I'm going out and I'm doing another draggy run. So give me a second and we'll be out on the road. All right, so I'm in Buster now. I'm about to head out and do this run. I'm just really concerned that Buster's not gonna like it and it's just gonna misfire and, and completely ruin the whole video. Um, and truth be told, I gapped them down a little bit more than they were. Remember, they were like 28,000, so I gapped them down a little bit more. I just thought it'd be in my best interest not have to do this again, you know, take the spark plugs out and regap them and waste more time doing this video by just gapping them down a little bit more and seeing what happens. But you now, Buster's moving along just fine, which 
you know, I have, I have no suspicion to think that this modification would hinder normal driving. It's when you get in the boost, am I concerned? But we're gonna find out here in a short minute. And for some reason, if I can't get this to work, I am boned because it is going to rain very, very soon. All right, so here we go. because it did that and never recorded the pool. Oh my goodness. Uh, well, I just quickly turned around and redid the pool. I just hope the car didn't have too much heat in it by that point. But I can tell you there is a lot of hesitation, a lot. It felt a little bit stronger at one point, but overall this didn't feel as good as just the way the spark plugs were before I side gapped them. So, I guess there's only one way to tell, and that's to check the draggy. But Buster didn't seem to really like that too much. I don't know if it was a misfire that shut it down in the first run, but it did a full run the second time around. And it just definitely feels like it's running more rough. But let's go ahead and take a look at the draggy results. And oh no. Wow, that is actually the slowest 40 to 80 that this car has done since I started tuning it pretty much. I mean, the last few 40 to 80s I did were all in the low fours. This is all those four and a half. And you can see what I was talking about, those momentary spikes right there in the beginning of the run. It felt pretty good. And then it just trailed off. So that's a bit discouraging. Is it possible I need to gap them down even further for the turbocharge application? Yes, it's very possible. First time I've ever done it on, you know, a vehicle like this. And this engine, as I stated earlier, is very particular about spark plug gap. So maybe if I gap them down even further, um, maybe the 20 thousands or less, I don't know. This would work a hell of a lot better, but I'm telling you, Buster hates these plugs as they are. The Acel plugs not modified were the fastest. Then second to that were the Ruthenium plugs gapped at 28 thousandths were the second fastest. I mean, we're splitting hairs between the two. The car was noticeably from the seat of the pants slower and almost a half second slower. That's really tough data to uh, not ignore. So it's possible I did something wrong. Very, very much so, but I can tell you right now how I did it in this car, no good. You know, maybe another day I will gap them down even more and see how the car runs, but I need to throw my ruthiniums back in so I can, you know, have my nice daily driver again. So yeah, that sucks, but um, <laughs> it is what it is. I go through all the trouble to make these videos to find out because my previous experience with side gapping spark plugs was actually pretty good. This time, not so much. Every engine's different, every combination's different. Some engines may tolerate it, some not. The EcoBoost are very, very picky engines. It wasn't having it. And until I try to retest this with extremely tighter gaps, side gapping spark plugs for this car was a waste. It definitely decreased power and made the car slower. Anywho, let me know what you think. Put your thoughts in the comments. Otherwise, it's gonna wrap it up here for the video. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Share it with everyone you know. If you wanna see more content like this and you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Keep a look out for the next Cars Creative video.